Opioid addiction continues to skyrocket in the United States due to the proliferation of prescription and illicit drug trade. Many areas are in crisis mode due to the overwhelming number of deaths from overdose. Drug overdose is the leading cause of accidental death in the United States. In 2014, there were 97 deaths attributed to accidental narcotic overdose in the District of Columbia. Of these deaths, 38% were attributed to prescription opioids rather than illicit versions. The overdose rate has grown by double digits every year for the last five years. Lawmakers are introducing legislation in support of the expansion of substance abuse treatment and overdose prevention services. In the last few months, the federal government has appropriated over $600 million for treatment, prevention, and education. The drug naloxone is used to counteract the effects of an opioid overdose. The District of Columbia has passed local legislation in support of the use of naloxone, but currently the medicine is only dispensed outside of hospitals by EMS personnel at the scene and through limited needle exchange programs. So, you may be asking yourself, what is an opioid overdose? An opioid overdose occurs when too much of any opioid, such as heroin or oxycodone, fits in too many receptors, slowing and then stopping the breathing. When administered, naloxone knocks the opiates off the receptors for a short time. This allows the person to breathe again and reverses the overdose. Currently, naloxone is distributed to heroin users at two needle exchange centers. One in the Northwest Quadrant and the other in Northeast, both in Ward 6. In a city with a population of over 600,000, it is simply not enough. Drug use is not limited to a single ward and thus our services should not be limited to a single ward. Linkage of naloxone services to needle exchange programs creates a stigma which limits access to the life-saving benefits of the medication. We had an opportunity to interview one of the providers at one of the locations in the District of Columbia, bred for the city. This is what he had to say. So when did the naloxone distribution, you think about, about two to three years? About two okay. years, maybe a little bit of two mm -hmm. years ago, I believe. Yeah, we started. And how has the uptake been among your patients? You mean, among your clients, I guess. How many clients accept it? Well, it's, yeah, do, is, do, are they interested in it? Is it something that's like, oh, I don't know, you know, that's not a problem for me, or, you know? They, they don't say that it's not a problem. <laughs> are they, they, they're interested in it. Uh -huh. they're, they're less interested in it if they're in a hurry to get out of here, right? Mm -hmm. But when they, when they give me the opportunity to actually explain to them the advantages of having Narcan available, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there, most of them are open to it. Okay. Some still more accepted because it won't happen to me. I've been doing this a long time. Right. Um, we we have a high compliance level here at Redford the City. And when I say when I say so compli even compliance, yeah. compliance level is when we give them a certain number of needles, clean needles, they bring that same amount or more back. Well, the advantage for us mm -hmm. and our program is that our little exchange programs within our medical. Okay. And Red for the Sea here, we offer so many other services right here in our facility. So whoever comes here, you don't know what they're coming here for. Right. right? They can come here for food, legal, social services, medical. Uh, they can come here for a, 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 a rooftop garden, a whole plethora of other services that we offer here. So you don't know uh, what an, any particular individual um, is coming here for whatever service. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hidden, yeah. but we're not hidden. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the only fallback with Narcan is the individual um, that is actually having an opiate um, overdose or a suspected opiate overdose is it put them in like an immediate withdrawal stage. Mm -hmm. Who wants to go? I've seen people withdraw from heroin, right? It is not a pretty sight, yeah. but they're still alive. How is the program funded? How are you grant funded or? We get most of our money from the DC Department of Health. Okay. And um, we use our own funds to purchase Narcan. Um, so what are you putting in your kits? 
So what we put in the kits is we have a little um, leaflet in here, it's a little page that tells you what the advantages of Narcan encourages overdose, what to look for when someone's having an, an, an actual overdose. We have two vials of Narcan and we have two um, syringes with a one inch needle attached in the pack. Yeah. Okay. Pop off the, the orange cap, there's a rubber stop in the center. You take the syringe out, you take the cap off of the syringe, and you push the tip of the needle below the level of the fluid, you drop all of it out. All of this is one dose, mm -hmm. right? And you give it in one of three places. You can give it here, you can give it here. Train somebody to use the American. 10 minutes. Okay. 10 minutes. So once they're in, this, once they're in the program, it's a very low um, time investment in order to uh, become trained and yeah. Use. People say uh, Narcan class is not a class. I take somebody in ten minutes. Yeah. It's a good Samaritan law. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fairly weak law. It leaves the it leaves the, res the basically um, the responsibility of an officer who arrives on the scene to determine, hey, do I want to arrest this person for possession of narcotics or paraphernalia or am I just going to say hey I'm just glad this person got help call 911 right so be it under our proposed expansion of access to community health centers, emergency rooms, and pharmacies, combined with an aggressive outreach program, we can expand the access to the drug exponentially and decrease mortality from overdose significantly. This will happen through a combination of increased access and awareness of the drug's utility and efforts to remove the social stigma of this critical drug. Our proposed program will offer training and support for health professionals and laypersons. Again, teaching someone to use naloxone to reverse overdose takes on average less than 10 minutes. We intend to use the following methods to market our program. Distribution of naloxone overdose prevention kits combines secondary prevention with education and puts the tools necessary to prevent unnecessary death in the hands of those most able to affect significant change, the community of individuals around those at risk. Studies have shown that even individuals who use themselves can successfully be taught to use the kits. Expansion of distribution and training of staff will require investment from the city and the following businesses. Thank you for watching.